Hello and welcome to my workshop. My name is Paul. I'm a luthier and bow maker based in Tasmania, Australia. In this series, I will share some of the projects I work on each week, giving you a glimpse over my shoulder as I work as though you were looking through the window into my workshop. So here's our hair. The hair is cut from a larger hank of uh, horse hair that I've got. If you buy your hair, you probably buy a hank of it. You may not have, if you do buy a hank of it, you may not have uh, enough hair to be able to go through and sort it. It's not already pre-sorted. I sort through the hair after I've cut it off a hank. Now I do source the best quality hair available to me. But even then when you go through it, now this probably won't show up on the camera. But there are uneven hairs in it. There's some that are slightly cur a little curly, um, a little rough. And those differences in texture in the hair can produce a difference in the sound quality. Um, if you have a rough patch of hair in, in, at, the, at the tip of the bow and uh, a smooth patch of hair in the middle, you can get more aggressive sound here and there. And it, it, it does make a difference. So... I'll go through and sort out the hairs, anything that's too rough or anything that is too uh, significantly different in um, diameter. If you have a thin hair or two thin hairs beside uh, a, a really thick hair or a number of really th of thicker hairs, then the thicker hairs will cancel out the sound from the thinner hairs and that uh, again can make a subtle difference to the sound quality that your bow produces. <laughs> Five grams, and that's exactly what we want in a violin bow. Viola has six grams, and cello has seven. Okay, so the next part is to tie the tie one into the hair off. So I do that using a uh, pair of quick grip jawed sprung pliers, lined with leather jaws. You can also use artery clamps, medical artery clamps lined with leather or cork to clamp your hair so clamp it off I'm using a fairly liberal length of um, fairly strong uh, high gauge This is, this is a linen thread. Prefer, I prefer not to use nylon or um, cotton. Well, cotton's okay as long as it's, it's strong. You don't want to use like a sewing thread that's too fine. And I will loop around once, around twice. Once 
doing this on a slightly odd angle for myself to allow the camera to get a look at it and then I'll cross the thread over tuck it through twice to give us two loops and that way when we come in and pull that tight it's not going to come undone or loosen up when I let it go I'll then let the clamp off let the hair sort itself out and reclamp it a little closer to the knot I use a, a two-part epoxy adhesive glue you don't want anything that goes off too quickly you don't want a five minute sort of stuff that goes off this takes about an hour to go off and then we're not waiting for an hour for it to go off we're going to we're going to burn it heat it up and get it to soak down into the knot it just helps hold everything together a little bit on the end of i've just just used bamboo skewers that i've trimmed the ends off and i'll just pop it on above the knot you don't want to get the glue on below the knot just apply that Blow the knot and really work it into the hair. Right in there. Move the glue out of the way. And then I'll come around. Loop a knot through the head, through the thread. And tie it off. Rather than just wrapping it, I will each time I go around I'll knot it and tie it off that way when you're done you've got a really nice strong so pull it off there or then just push those knotted sections down nice and tight an extra and then an extra loop through just to finish that last knot off and that ties it off trim off the extra excess threads And then on a scrap so I don't get any glue on the bench I'll just trim the top of the hair off a little more glue on the top and on the notch And burn the top of the knot off. Just dip that in some water so that it doesn't, there's no accidents. Tap that down. I'm using an old rag just squash that knot up nice and tight and there we have the knot and that hair will not come out of that knot I'm trying not to get myself in the way of this 
from there I'll wet the hair and dripping wet. So the hair goes in. And I just tuck it down. Frog mortise wedge pops in, nose first in contact with the hair. And then the back edge, the back heel, then presses down. And that's in. I start with putting the hair in the frog first. It doesn't matter whether you go frog first or head first. Personally, I find it easier to judge the final length of the hair going from the frog to the head than in reverse. Next, I'll use a comb, a fine comb. And I'll comb the knots out of the hair. But generally, I'll start with the end of the hair. Using a little bit of water as well on the comb to help bring the knots out. I don't comb it a set number of times. I comb it until the knots are out and I've got a nice even band of hair. I don't see the point in setting a set number of times to comb the hair. I did see a video recently where someone said, oh, I comb the hair six times or 16 times and I count it every time for the same amount or something. Really and truly, I don't see the point. You want to comb it until you have a nice even band of hair. Combing it any more than that is, is either unnecessary. And combing it that number of times, if that's too few, and doesn't get the knots out, then it's not doing its job. So you do it for a reason, not necessarily for a certain number of... So I'll then pull the hair through fairly firmly. And the slide goes on. The frog then goes on the stick. Comb that through. off the end still slightly long the ferrule goes on making sure it's the right way around and slides down under the frog I think we got the that in shot as it goes on the frog but I'm sure you know what, I'm, what I mean I'll then comb it through again and reapply the clamp now going into the tip end of the bow going into the tip end of the bow I find it much easier to eye this point where the hair comes out of the clamp up with 
this point where the hair comes out of the head the hair leaves the head at this point and I find it much easier to line that up with this point on the clamp than I do to line it up with where the hair comes out of the leaves the wedge in the frog as that depends on how deep the undercut in the frog is so I find it much more consistent to go from the frog to the head than I do the other way around the majority of makers and rehairers though will put the hair in the head first and then to the frog personally I don't think it matters once you've got the hair in the head you've just got an even band of hair from head to frog um, and it, it, before the spreading wedge goes in it doesn't really matter you end up at the same point so because of the amount of faffing around I've done to get the, the video shots in this hair is now all a bit out of whack so I'll comb it back through re-wet it comb it through and get the clamp in before we move on to the next shot of tying off the um, the hair in the in the head the, 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 so then we'll, then we'll tie, tie off the hair and put it in the head Then we need our tip wedge, clamp off the hair, holding it fairly firmly in your fingers, take the ferrule, take the frog off the stick, you need to flip it over so that when the hair goes in and flips back the other way, it's in the right spot, tuck our hair in. should just pop down in there do a nice fit without being too tight and uh, without popping out pop flip the frog over pop the pop the frog back on and put a little tension on it not too much you can see You can see the hair is coming nicely out of the tip. And out of the frog. I'll wet the hair again. fingers of the hair to the width of the ferrule making sure it's even both sides um, you'll hear some people talk about putting more hair on the playing side than the other and then offsetting the length of the hair to counter the extra strength personally I don't agree with that philosophy ensuring it's tightening in the clamp in the, in the vise or, the, or in whatever jig you're using I'll apply pressure to the frog Take the adjuster screw off and I'll hold that pressure on the frog with the comb in place. I'll then flip the frog back on the hair with the comb in place, holding the hair straight and even from the from the head. Then 
look to press the spreading wedge in. At this point you could apply a small drop of crazy glue or super glue to the back of it but you need to be extremely careful that that doesn't get in the hair. Do you get too much on it? Just a little dab with a cloth to reduce how much is there. I'm with you in a minute, sweetie. Then I use something to push on the back of the, the frog. Um, keeping an eye on our mark that we marked off. Tap, lightly tap that spreading wedge in. You can still see the mark. The comb comes out then. The hair is held spread even and straight so you don't get any crossed hairs from the head down to the frog. At this point we can then comb the hair through from the frog down to the head. To show we have uh, no cross hairs, they'll generally rest it on a block using a new blade in the scalpel. Very, very carefully. Just to tear that away. And once it's down far enough, the remaining wedge just snaps off. Leaving us with a nice, even straight band of hair. I do not believe in stretching the hair back behind the head. When we loosen the hair off, it's still very even. And as that dries, it'll dry evenly. Then we'll have a nice, nice band of hair. So that's a completed rehair. I'll include a few photos of that. Um, and we will talk to you in the next one.